Dear friends, I'm happy you are here. And also, I'm more happy that we have Dr. Motlak as our speaker. We are fortunate that he is here. I thought the best way I can introduce him to tell you the books that he wrote. One of them is Choosing Your Destiny, One God, Many Fates, One Garden, Many Flowers, The Case for Christ and Baha'u'llah, King of Kings and the Lord and Lord of the of Lord. And this is the latest book, Why We Are in This World, Why We, co we Become to This World, or We Come to This World. And then the door to heaven that many of you have, and the greatest news. So I don't think, after all these books that he wrote, I should say anything anymore, and I tell you to welcome Dr. Motla. I have been traveling for three months. I started in a city called Kelowna in uh, about 300 miles north of, San Fran uh, north of uh, Vancouver and uh, traveled to California, northern and southern. Uh, I was invited to many meetings, uh, including uh, Encino Center, which uh, holds about 150 people. And many invitations come and came, and I was honored to uh, uh, present my topic of knowing God and loving God to many audiences. And this is my last point, uh, my last city, and I'm going back to Michigan from the hot, wonderful weather in your area to really freezing cold in Michigan. Uh, the topic that uh, I have chosen to present in all my talks, and I think is the most essential and the most urgent topic, is knowing the spiritual design of creation. This is the topic. I'd like to start with two points, two statements from Christ. This is a Christian country, and it's best to use Christian references. One of them is Baha'u'llah quotes at the beginning of Book of Certitude. It is called the Great Tribulation. If you come from a Christian background, you know Christians talk about this. And how do they interpret the Great tri Tribulation? They say, when Christ comes the second time, he will take the good Christians to heaven and all the bad ones and mediocre ones and all the Muslims and Jews and Hindus, all the other people will remain to be destroyed. Uh, this is their version, a uh, literal version of, of that statement. Baha'u'llah, of course, offers a spiritual interpretation and that is not, uh, in, mo in most cases, uh, we, we are not literal minded. And he says the great tribulation is this, that a person who wants to know God does not know where to turn because people who claim to know God are many, many, and uh, the, the ways to God have multiplied. So there is a confusion about where they can truly know God. In response to this plea, I uh, started a new website. It's called theknowledgeofgod.com. Uh, on that book, I have placed two books in English. One is called The Knowledge of God. The other one is called The Spiritual Design of Creation. The first book is motivational. The second book is informational. I hope to publish both of them within a year. And I also wrote two books in Farsi, the language of my native language, which I owe to Persian-speaking uh, Persian people. Uh, the, uh, one is published. It's called Cherubi and Jahan Amadeim. Uh, Mr. Rouhani showed that book. The other one is called Life, uh, Zindagi Ba Khuda Wa Bi Khuda Tafawut An Harchis. Life with God and without God. What's the difference? I like to quote one more uh, verse from one more statement from Jesus. He addresses Christians and says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What, do, what this really mean is, and the Christians also interpret it this way, that if we seek God, 
everything else will take care of itself. The first and foremost need we have in life is to know God. Once we know God, everything else will take, take care of itself. And this is truly the message of the Baha'i faith, because Baha'u'llah repeatedly says that the purpose of creating human beings is to know God and love God. And uh, when we know the kingdom of God, of course, we, this, this is synonymous with uh, knowing and loving God. And it also means knowing the Baha'i faith, because the kingdom of God also refers to the establishment of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. To know, let's look at the world and see, uh, uh, discover what we see. The world today is in trouble. We have advanced materially. Never before people have enjoyed such a material life. But spiritually, people are in pain. I do not believe ever mankind has experienced such pain and suffering at the level it's experiencing now. The statistics show the, the le level of depression, anxiety, uh, marital conflicts, you name it. Whatever we, wherever we talk, we find that the statistic is rising. And the world is declining spiritually, emotionally, although it is advancing materially, it's back going backward in terms of spiritual. And Baha'u'llah says this will continue to get worse and worse until mankind will be unable to endure these pressures. And you know people how a, a stressful life we live. Uh, I traveled in every home that I stayed and wherever I look at people, people are rushing as if they are in a competition, in a running competition. Uh, they do not have enough time for their families, they do not have enough time to read, to contemplate, and it, life is getting busier and busier. The reason, of course, is that people are trying to advance their material life, but they're not paying any attention to their spiritual life. We are not material beings, we are spiritual beings. What people are doing today is like this, you're in a car, you are the driver, the soul is the driver, and this, this body is the vehicle. People are paying attention to the vehicle, fixing the car, but paying no attention to the driver, to the one who is drive, uh, driving the car. And uh, this is really what is happening today. And unless we begin to pay attention to our spiritual life, the misery will continue and get worse. Today, when we talk, uh, we, um, according to a statistic, we have 80% of people say they believe in God in this country is one of the most uh, people who believe in God probably more than any other country in, in the world, in, in, in the Christian world at least, <coughs> Canada and United States. And yet, we do not see much signs of this belief in God. Why, why is the case? What is the, what is the reason? The reason is very obvious. There is a big difference between believing in God and knowing God. Believing in God is just a first step. But knowing God is really the ultimate uh, reason for which we have come into this world. Let me give you an example. Suppose you fall in love with a person and you marry that person and uh, you think that person was the best choice. Because you believe in that person. You believe that was uh, the choice of your life. And then after six months, after a year, or even sooner or later, you find out that person is the exact opposite of what you thought that person would be. This is the reason we have 50% divorce, and then the other 40, the other 50, about 40% do not live according to rules of justice and love. Uh, therefore, what people think about God or the kind of God they believe is not the kind of real God that, that exists. And we know people commit suicide, uh, these, uh, suicide bombers, uh, to, uh, in the name of God. They use God to destroy life. So we need uh, to discover uh, in all of our lives, it should be de devoted, dedicated to, uh, to knowing of, uh, the knowledge of God. And I am not able here, in a short period of time here, to introduce God to you. I've written all those books, but my, my prime purpose is motivational, to motivate you to take this subject more seriously and read uh, at least those, those four volumes. Life without God is like this. Suppose you're living in a mansion, 
is the most glorious, beautiful mansion. But it is dark. There is no light. You, you, you live, you survive, uh, you manage every day, but you do not see the beauty of that mansion. Living without God, we, we certainly meet our physical needs. We do fine. We survive. But we do not see the beauty that lies hidden in human life. And once we see that beauty, our life changes a hundredfold. There is no way we can enjoy deep and everlasting, continuous happiness without the light of God. God is the light of the earth and the heavens, is in the Quran says. So without that light, life is truly dark. There are two levels of, of knowing God. One is knowing and one is seeing. Once we journey through the state of, uh, uh, stage of knowing God, eventually we'll reach a point where we'll be, we'll be able to see God. That is the ultimate level of, of growth. And Baha'u'llah speaks of these two levels in his writings. Da'na'i wa bina'i means knowing and seeing. And if you're familiar with the Bible, you know that Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Uh, the purity of heart, when we are pure, we will actually be able to see God with our heart and soul. God is invisible, of course. We cannot see him with our, own, with our physical eyes. But we can see his presence every moment of our lives. Uh, I give the example of gravity. Can you ever escape the power of gravity? We are surrounded by gravity wherever we are in the universe. God created gravity. If we cannot escape from gravity, can we escape from God? The visible eyes of God are everywhere watching us, yet is invisible to our physical eyes, but we can see him through our spiritual eyes. I run into many people who say, I don't need God. I'm a good person. I don't need to believe in religion. I'm doing fine. I'm a very good person. Why should I need uh, God or religion? I have a response to these people, uh, which is based on uh, a theory of human needs, psychology. Uh, if you have studied psychology, you know Dr. Abraham Maslow. I, I do not believe you've taken a course in psychology without hearing his name. He has a theory of human needs. And he says, we have five levels of needs in terms of priority from one to five. First, we have physical needs, such as need for food and rest. We have safety needs uh, to be safe from danger, from danger of war, uh, danger of disease, uh, loss of family, job, you name it. The third need is love needs. We need to, be, uh, lo to love and to be loved. And the fourth level of need is belonging. We need to belong and have a sense of recognition in society. And finally, the fifth level is self-actualization, which relates to purpose and meaning in life and development of our spiritual, our, our inner capacities. This uh, theory, this view is universally accepted and quoted in just about every book. So let's see how Love, knowledge of God and love of God can contribute to all these needs. First, when we have an intimate relationship with God, we find that we are very precious. We are indeed created in the image of God. Baha'u'llah says we are the essence. God says that we are the essence of my light. You cannot raise human vision, self-esteem higher than this. So if we find out that we're very precious, we take care of our body physically, we try to uh, stay healthy and live as long as uh, possible because we value ourselves, we are precious. We do not throw jewels away, but we, can, we throw stones away. So people who abuse their body, they really do not cherish their, themselves. So uh, intimacy with God helps us stay physically, aside from the fact that we, um, we have emotion, positive emotions, we uh, stay healthier and live longer. The next one is security, safety and security. When we truly are intimate connection with God, we know that God protects us. 
uh, there is a quotation that says, those who are for God, God is for them. Even death does not threaten our security because we know God protects us. We, we are not temporary be living beings who, who die. Death is not the end of our journey. The next level is love. When we truly love God, we also truly love ourselves because we are made in the image of God. How can we know God, love God, and not love ourselves? And also, how can we love God and ourselves and not love all the other people? So our level of uh, love is also enhanced considerably. The next level is recognition and belonging. When people join the Baha'i faith, they find a group of like-minded people they can work with. Uh, I cannot imagine in my travels, wherever I went, people, uh, it was like I had relatives. They, they, I was surrounded with loving people who invited to their homes, who helped me any way they could. So this is also uh, fourth level. And finally, uh, the level of uh, self-actualization and purpose and meaning, belief in God and, and not belief in God, love of God and knowledge of God uh, gives us a meaning and purpose. No other, nothing else can give us a meaning and purpose. Uh, uh, enduring uh, purpose, as does knowledge of God and love of God, and also helps us develop, cultivate our spiritual capacities. Uh, Baha'u'llah says we are like a treasure, and his purpose is to bring out these jewels out of the treasure. And we see that the difference between people who become Baha'i is that truly they grow spiritually and become much more advanced than others. Baha'u'llah compares us to a bird. He's, he says that this bird comes down to the ground to take some food, to take some grains, but forgets about flying. And then its wings become soiled and heavy, is unable to fly anymore. So we come to this world with capacities to, to uh, uh, fly high into the heavens but we become so absorbed in material life, in making a daily living, that we forget about our spiritual life, and then we are unable to fly. Because once we are spiritually uh, remote, then it's very hard to activate and ignite this love. It's very difficult after that. I'd like to tell you a story, uh, a parable from Jesus again. I love the words of Jesus. They are they're most beautiful. Uh, this parable summarizes the uh, purpose and the destiny of us in this world. Uh, Jesus says that, uh, according to this parable, there were five young ladies who were wise and five young ladies who were foolish. They were invited to a, a wedding banquet and uh, the bridegroom is Jesus, is a, me a metaphor for Jesus is bridegroom, and religion, uh, a woman is a metaphor for religion. So they were invited to uh, this wedding. Five of, uh, five of uh, the, the ones who were wise took a lamp, a lighted lamp, but some extra oil. They were, the ones who were foolish took lamp, but no extra oil. So this was midnight, and they were waiting for the bridegroom to come. And they waited and waited. There was no sign of bride bridegroom. The ones who had little oil or no extra oil, uh, the lamp was dead. They had no more light. And they asked the other five to lend them some of the oil. And those five young ladies said, no, we cannot lend you any of our oil. So after a while, the bridegroom came and took these, uh, these five uh, wise ladies, young ladies, followed him to the banquet, to the reception banquet, to the wedding banquet, and the door was closed. After a while, then those foolish ladies, young ladies, arrived, and they saw no sign of their friends nor of the bridegroom, and they went to the, to the door, to the, to the reception hall, and knock on the door, and they, they, they heard these words, I do not know you. That's all they were heard. I do not know you. So what does really this parable means? Uh, 
The parable means is this. Baha'u'llah says that uh, oil is symbol of wisdom. And, uh, of course, this story also shows that those uh, who had wiser had extra oil. So oil is wisdom. These two groups of young ladies, they had pure hearts. They were wonderful Christians. What the difference was, one group had wisdom, the other group did not have wisdom. What, what is really, uh, and then uh, when they asked for um, some oil, the, the other group could not give them oil because wisdom is not something you can give to somebody. Wisdom is not something you can lend somebody. Wisdom is something we must gain and acquire. And uh, so once we, th those young ladies failed to know the bridegroom, the door was closed to them. What this really this means is this, that this is our chance to choose our destiny. If we do not choose our destiny in this life, in this short period, of, which is one moment in eternity, we'll find that doors of heaven will be closed to us. Therefore, Baha'u'llah says, whatever we lose in this life, we will never be able to gain. The opportunities we have in this life will never be repeated again. So wisdom indicates, uh, how, how can we tell someone is wise or unwise? Pretty obvious uh, sign is that a wise person investigates, does not make a choice blindly. For instance, if somebody, you marry the first person you meet, uh, you meet that's not wisdom. Uh, you investigate, you find the facts, uh, and then make, it, make a choice. Today we find that people just choose the religion of their parents, of their ancestors. They do not look around to find out what is the truth. Uh, many Christians are closing their hearts to Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah says, I have opened to you the gates of wisdom. Why do you close your hearts to me? I tell you a, a simple experience that I had. Uh, I went to uh, Dallas Theological Seminary, one of the most famous seminaries that they train uh, ministers. And uh, this was about five years ago. And I wanted to give uh, copies of my book, I Shall Come Again, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, to the professors. And uh, when I entered the building, a, a guard came to me and said, what are you doing? I said, I have come to... Uh, give copies of my books to professors. He said, you, you, do you have permission? I said, no, this university usually is open. People can come and visit professors. He said, no, you have to have permission. I said, okay, take me to the dean of college and I will ask permission. So he took me to the dean and uh, he said, what are you doing here? I said, told him that I want to give copies of my books and I had samples in my hand. Uh, he said, uh, I do not allow you. I said, why not? He said, I must guard them. Now, here are professors of religion who train ministers. So, he did not want to talk to me. He looked down on me. I, he found me a nuisance. I've come here to cause trouble. Maybe he thought I was Satan or something like this. But I wanted to open a conversation with him. And I was very gentle and kind, and I tried to see if I could talk with him. Eventually, I succeeded. And he said... Uh, what happened to Baha'u'llah? I said, Baha'u'llah passed away and he, he, he was buried. He said, no, Jesus is in heaven. He did not die and he is in heaven. Uh, so I gave him, uh, offered him some examples uh, from the Bible itself that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I told him about Paul's statement that the physical body is perishable and uh, does not last. Uh, the spiritual body is imperishable. And I told him that Jesus, God, is a spirit, and uh, how would it, make, would it make sense for Jesus to be a body sitting next to God who is a spirit? A body require, has requirements. You have to take bath, you have to eat, you get sick. So if, if Jesus took the same body, he would have to take care of itself, take care of his physical needs. That doesn't sound very respectable. Uh, he was speechless. He could not he did not know what to say. He had never heard such a statement from anyone. And uh, eventually, uh, I very f kindly said goodbye to him and left. But I think he probably blamed himself for allowing me to talk with him because 
I undermined the very foundation of his faith because they say Christianity stands or falls on resurrection. So he could not stand on that basis anymore. Then I went to the library to give copies to the library, and he said, wait for an hour or two, and then we'll take a look at these books and see if they would be useful for our library. Uh, so I went, waited for a while and went back, and he said, no, these books are not suitable for our library. And he gave it back to me. Uh, then I went, I said, okay, I've been here uh, spending time. Why not try to uh, meet with the president of the of this college. So I walked into the uh, president's office, and uh, the secretary was very courteous. I told him why I was here, and she said, okay, uh, ask the president. He said, he can come in. So I went to, the, to his office, I showed him the book. He was a young man, uh, sort of liberal, unlike the dean, uh, who was very negative. Uh, he welcomed me, and uh, we talked about uh, the fact that Christ has returned, and um, they, uh, Christians are taking the Bible very literally, and as the Jews uh, rejected Jesus for the same reason, so it's possible that Christians could also reject their promised one for the same reason. He could not really refute my arguments. Uh, he, he talked very courteously with me for a while, and uh, said, okay, uh, I will invite some of the special, uh, people who specialize in other religions to have a discussion with them, uh, have a dialogue and discussion to see, because he felt that he was not specializing in the Baha'i faith. I said, fine, I'll welcome. And uh, uh, I waited and waited, but the invitation never came. A year later, I went to, to the same uh, city and called him, and the secretary said, uh, he does not have time to talk to you. So this example really shows, I can give you other examples. Uh, in fact, I'll give you one more example to see how they close the doors to, to us. I had an interview on Christian broadcasting station. It was about 15, 20 minutes by a very liberal broadcaster. Uh, and I waited and waited for this to be broadcast. And after a month or two, I called and said, I said, what happened to this uh, interview? He said that uh, my uh, boss had told me that uh, if we broadcast this interview, we'll have many angry Christians who would call and say, why do you bring a non-Christian to a Christian station? And we also sent 50 copies of our books, I Shall Come Again, to 50 clergy in our town and invited them to investigate. And uh, none of them responded except one who came to our home and wanted to see who we are. He wanted to spy on us. And I was invited also to a Christian uh, uh, ministerial association. There were a dozen Christian ministers uh, because one of the members of this association had become Baha'is and he arranged for me to uh, present a talk on second coming of Christ. And uh, I still remember the first question was from a... a Catholic priest. He said, what will happen to us, Instead of, in place of refuting my evidence, he said, what will happen to us if we reject Baha'u'llah? And I said, I do not know the answer, but Jesus gave the answer earlier, a long time ago. He said, if you deny me, I will deny you before, my, before the angels of heaven. And there was no, there was silence, there was no other response. So we are facing a, a, a group, uh, believers, who are completely closed. They close their doors to us. Um, when I was in, in uh, Los Angeles, I was supposed to have an interview on Persian television, and uh, the man was very liberal and very kind, but eventually, after several ca calls and contacts, he refused to have an interview with me because he did not want to be associated with the Baha'is. For that reason alone, he, he declined, although he had many Baha'i friends. But I was fortunate to be invited by uh, uh, Afghan TV, and uh, they really welcomed me. I had an uh, interview. Um, it was actually took about three hours, but we, they eliminated ad ads, and it was about two hours, and it is now posted on uh, our Persian website. I will tell you about our website. We have three websites. It's called Bahanine.com, and it's two hours. 
He was, this was an extremely liberal Muslim, very knowledgeable about the Quran. He asked me many questions about, about the Quran and uh, about our views about Islam, um, about uh, Muhammad being the last prophet. This is really the major issue for them. <clears throat> And this is now available to you. <clears throat> if you have time, please take time and, and look, take a look. Let me tell you about <clears throat> my website. We have three websites, and I will uh, finish, and if there are some questions, I will respond. We have three websites. One is called globalperspective.org. It uh, presents uh, published books of mine, about 20 volumes. I have another website called theknowledgeofgod.com. It's my unpublished books, about 20 volumes. Some of them are small, some of them are large. <clears throat> and our latest website, as I said, is baha9.com. And uh, that is, uh, has about four books in Farsi. Baha'u'llah in the Quran is already there. Ayna Baha'i is there. Uh, Cherubin Jahan is, is there. And we are putting uh, other copies. So you have Persian friends, please let them know that they could benefit from this. Uh, really, this should be adequate as a motivational talk so that you would read those books. Uh, Mr. Rouhani has brought some copies, I do not know where they are, of my latest book, Chera Bain John Amadeem. I hope those of who, who speak Farsi will uh, take a look at that book, and those who are English speaking, uh, go to knowledgeofgod.com and take a look at The Spiritual Design of Creation. It will be published within uh, six months. If there are any questions about the topics that I cover, please ask. If not, uh, it would be a great honor for me to talk to you. If, please, uh, <clears throat> if you have any comments or questions, I would be honored to answer you. But this is basically what I wanted to present. Thank you for listening.